In this video, we are going to create a beginning to end uh, run book scenario where we're going to create a new user in Active Directory. So we're going to create a, a run book to, to create the user, and then we're going to create the service request so that uh, an end user can enter in some details and get that Active Directory user created. We're going to do this from beginning to end. We are going to do this using all the built-in default features. This is not the way we'll do it as we go forward. This is just a, a, a really basic example. So we go into uh, Orchestrator. We start all our run books by creating a new run book here, and we always initialize data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just show you really simply how you would use this uh, Orchestrator just to create a new user in Active Directory. We've already set up all our connections to Active Directory in the previous video. And we can simply select from the Active Directory integration pack, um, create user. Now we always start off with initialize data and we basically create a workflow by selecting the arrow there and moving across to there. We then can double click on any particular object that we've uh, placed into our run book. We select the configuration because it needs to know where our active directory is. And then we get our properties for our integration item down here. So here we just got common name. So let's just call this a uh, person test user. And we have additional properties down here by selecting optional properties. Now here we can see all the uh, properties that are available to us for this integration item here. Now we looking at these, we can see that not every um, property that's available in Active Directory has been exposed here. And that's one of the downside of using the integration packs is that we are at the mercy of the programmer who has created that inter um, integration package. As we go further down the line, we'll look at where we might actually start using PowerShell to do a lot of this functionality. Now the PowerShell stuff is, is more complicated, but it gives us far greater flexibility to be able to, uh, to do things. So we might use a combination of integration packages and PowerShell. For the moment, we're gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna create um, a last name property and a first name property. call this Mr. Test and we hit finish. So we've got our initialized data and we've got our create user and we've hard coded all this information in. And if we check this run book back in, so when we're working on a run book, we check it out of the system. When it's checked out, it can't be called from service manager or any other kind of integration systems. Uh, and we'll also check out when we're gonna be running tests, etc. So we need to check it back in to use it. And we can actually hit run from within orchestrator here. And we can see that the run uh, has grayed out, which means it's running. And we can see that the run book was successful. If we come over to Active Directory and do our search for test, we can see test user has been created. And we can see the first name, uh, Mr. and last name, test. We can also see it's been created as disabled. So that's great. We've been able to use orchestrator to create this test user. But this isn't much use to us at the moment because it's going to be fixed properties and always going to create the same user as test user. So what we need to do is find a way that we can pass parameters into Orchestrator um, and have they, this test user created based on those parameters. Now we're going to do this by going to initialization data and adding the parameters in here. So what we're going to call uh, as username, uh, first name, Last name. So the initialization data is gonna have all those uh, properties and we're gonna then pass the properties into this initialization data from Service Manager in a little bit. This link here is called the bus and we can get parameters for any of our integration items from this bus. So we double click it and remove our hard coded information here. Anywhere where there's a property or an area where you can put a value, you can right click, select subscribe and select publish data. Here we'll be able to select any object that's on the um, bus and put in the information. So 
So what we're doing here is saying that when we initialize this ROM book, we're going to enter in data into the initialized data, and this is going to then passed on to the create user object, which is going to take that information and create the user in Active Directory. Select finish. We're going to rename this something more useful. So create AD user. And we're going to check it in. So when this uh, runbook is now called from Service Manager, we'll pass the information in and we'll get our user created. So let's switch back to our Service Manager. The first thing we need to do is run the connector. The connector will obviously run automatically. As we uh, want to get going straight away, we will run this manually. It's synchronized now. And what this is going to do is it's going to go to look at Orchestrator and find any new runbooks that have been created. Now it's finished, we go to the library and select runbooks we're going to see that our new runbook has been created. Now what we need to do is take this runbook and create a service manager object or activity so that we can uh, have a place where we can enter those parameters to pass over to Orchestrator. So we're going to create an activity by selecting create a runbook activity here. And I start all my runbooks activities with RB so that I can distinguish them from other activities. And we're going to call this AD create user. Now we're going to see this is going to create a standard activity within Service Manager. And if we have a look over at the run book, we can actually see here we can map properties into the first name, a username, and last name. We're not going to do that at the moment, we're going to do that a little bit further on, a little bit later. Other than that, this is a standard activity. Now the next part of this is we need to create a service request template. Now if you think every single service request that's going to have specific information required to pass over to the run book, it's going to need its own template because we're going to need to customize this template so that it can accept the parameters required for the specific service request. And that's the whole idea of service requests is they're specifically to fix a particular issue or to, to create a specific service type request. So what we do is we come under templates and we create a new template. And this is the service request template. So we're gonna call this the uh, service request and we're gonna call this uh, create new AD user. And it's gonna be based on the service request class. So this is the service request that will be always used when creating a new Active Directory user. And we can actually fill in some kind of uh, information that we might be using across every single service request for this type. So we could call this um, Now we need to bring in the activity that we've just created, i.e. what we're doing is linking the run book in Service Manager to this service request template. So under activities, we select add, and we're going to add the activity, which is the run book automation. What we need to do here is tick this box at the top here to say it is ready for automation. And we're going to hit apply. Now we can fill in any of these other related items um, in the same way we would do any service request. They're not specifically required for what we're doing. And we hit apply. So now we can create a new service request based on that template. So we can go and create new service request from template. We can see our service request create new AD user. And we can fill in our box standard information and activities. And from within this service request, we can enter the information here. So we're going to call this uh, Mr. Two, username test29. I'm going to hit apply and OK. 
we just need to fill out our standard required fields. So urgency low, priority low, sign to me. And we can hit apply. And so from within service manager, we've created a new service request. We can see the service request that's assigned to me. Here, create new user. And we can see that at the moment its status is new. A quick refresh, we can see that it's in progress. If we shoot back to our orchestrator, we can see that he's received in a request, looking at the time, 55, and it has succeeded. If we go over to our Active Directory, we can see our new test 29 has been created. First name Mr. 2, testing user 29. So the difference here is that we've now been able to create a service request from within a service manager, and we've actually been able to pass parameters. We've been able to create um, the, the text boxes and the uh, input parameters needed to create this basic user. And what we will find is in a moment, we can see that the status now changed to completed. So we've been able to create this service request within service manager and input parameters. This is great, but what we wanted to do is actually get our end users to be able to do this. So maybe our HR department, we would might, might want to be able to create these kind of users. So we can do that by creating a service offering. And a service offering means that we can actually expose those kind of uh, abilities to create the service request in a front end portal. Now to do this under library, we have something called the service catalog. And we have two things, we have request offerings and service offerings. The service offerings are kind of like the overall headings. So we might have like service offerings relating to Active Directory and service offerings relating to email. We can kind of group together request offerings under a service offering. So we're gonna start off by creating a request offering. And this is effectively designing the page that we're gonna to present to our end user. Okay, so we're gonna say creating And we can give some description. Um, okay, so the request offering has to be based on a service request template. And we know we've got a service request template because it's the one we created earlier. And it's the one that we used to create the, um, the test 29 user. The next is to create the user prompts. And these are the prompts that are gonna be presented on the web portal for the user to enter information into. And then we will then map these to the specific places within the service request uh, for the parameters. So what we're gonna have here is a username, and we're gonna have first name, and we're gonna have last name. There's lots of um, cool stuff we can do with restricting and querying other um, management packs. And again, we'll cover this much further on in, in other videos. So we can say what kind of inputs these are, whether they're string, telephone numbers, emails. So then we need to go on to the mapping. And this is where we're gonna map those prompts to the areas within the runbook. So we can see RB, runbook, active directory, created user. And this is the activity that we created a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, my resolution's a bit tight here, but if we hold over there, we can see that these are the three mapping or the text files that we need to map to. So the first one is first name. Second one is username. And the last one is first na last name. And we can link knowledge base articles to this if we need, want to put more information in. Okay, we can publish this in draft or we can actually make this publish. We can go straight to making this published and we are going to make myself the owner. Okay, so now we've created a, a request offering. We need to make the service offering the kind of heading that we're going to put all our request offerings into. So create service offering, call these our AD tasks. 
tasks. Okay, get a request offerings. So we're gonna now add our request offerings in. Um, we called it creating an Active Directory user. We're gonna publish directly and we're gonna create. So we've created our request offering. So that's the basically creating the web page that's gonna take all the parameters. And we've linked that to our service request template, which has the link back to the run book. And we then created a service offering, which kind of encompass our request offerings. If we now go to the portal, we can see our go to our service catalog. We've got our AD tasks and we've got our create our AD user. We click on it. We are asked to put in some parameters. So I'm going to call this user test 59 and call it Ms. And call this last test. And we hit submit. And this has created a new service request. We can see our create new AD user is in progress. Come over to Orchestrator and hit refresh. We can see at 3.05, a new user was created. We bring up our Active Directory. We can see that our test 59 has been created. So it means last test. So what we've been able to do is take the request from the service portal, which can be pushed out to any end user. We've been able to create the request and we've been able to push this automatically through Orchestrator. Now there's lots and lots of questions to be asked. Would we want to be, have it approved in Service Manager so that a, a, a particular agent or service person can approve it before it goes through? There's tons of parameters that are missing. How do we uh, select managers and stuff like that? And this is where, you know, this is a wonderful kind of demonstration, but it doesn't in any way match real world. And we'll soon see that when we start trying to match real world, we can get to a lot more complex and interesting ways of doing this. And so going forward, we're gonna to start to build upon this concept and make a full-blown application for creating a new user. Thank you for watching.